on rain, but old school has also played it in lane in the past, so it's kind right. of a flex positional pick. Mm -hmm. I mean, I doubt Rek will play it in Rome, but that does give Hammer's Kinetic the Adagio and Lance. So where you get one priority pick, you have to give up a few others. Definitely the strong picks going over to Kinetic there. Uh, but, you know, Samuel inside the Drifting Dark, one of these heroes that's able to outrange the Adagio, stay a little bit out of the danger of those impales and getting locked down from that CC. Yeah, absolutely. And with the Kestrel coming in, she is really good into Lance and Adagio once she scales to the end game. But Hammer's Kinetic says, we're going to try to outdraft you a little bit. We're going to pick up this Catherine to try to block off the Kestrel damage and block those uh, Malice and Verdicts coming out of... Samuel. Especially if you get the silence down during the Drifting Dark, it wastes a lot of that cooldown, and it's a very long cooldown. So if you're able to do that, I think it can be quite impactful in the fights. Plus, if you don't have your silence available, you can always stun him during the Drifting Dark if you get close enough. That's Lots of true. ways to shut down the damage here, I think. I mean, when you see Kestrel and you see Samuel, they can only shoot and fire abilities in one direction to do damage, right? Well, Lance and Catherine are two of the best at stopping that damage from landing. Pretty much, yeah. I Yeah, they're pr they are very tanky, though. I... I think Gangstar Sirius look pretty good here, though. Fuji, who do you uh, expect to take this one? I expect Sirius to take it, uh, as long as they play to their strengths. All right, let's see if they do. Gangstar Sirius and Hammer's Kinetic face off for the third time this series to determine who moves forward. We're going to pass it on over to our shoutcasters, Forecourt Jester and Xing Yi. Gang threes are always a good time here, ladies and gentlemen, but call the meek on Lance. This is kind of bringing the best of two worlds to me here. It's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen them play that jungle lance before, especially not that carry lance. Uh, we saw the Rome lance in the last game not working that well against Attacker. But I think for this lance, I think with that Samuel and that Kestrel, it's going to be a lot easier for him and quite a good potential for double or triple. Uh, well, at least they're looking for that first blood here. Wrecked, just not going to go anywhere. He is done, so got caught there. Very nice kind of calls from Hammer's Connect to make that one happen. Status Baked will get shoved all the way back. You can see Old School just also just tending to stay up into the top of the lane. He's just going to let this lane push out, not willing to give up that kill, but Kinetic have now kind of implemented themselves into the jungle here. Yeah, they've got the aggression, and they're just lying there waiting in bait. Oh my gosh, yep. that chase. Done. Impaled, no problem. Drifting Dark, though, should be able to get Status Baked out of this uh, s situation. Uh, but now, you know, Sweet Jay, he's actually taking a lot of return damage. Status Fakes is not quite there to follow up. Now they're turning around on top of Wrecked. Are we looking? No, it's actually in lane for the kill. And there goes Wrecked on top of it as well. A lot of focus in jungle, but Mikchi wins the 1v1 in lane. Will Sweet Jay still live out through this one? Status Fake looking for that return kill. Hasn't been able to find it yet. Cold and Meek, just like what our guys at the desk were saying. You know, between the Catherine and Lance, they're able to tank up a lot of that damage, and they're juggling it very nicely here. Yeah, I think Sweet Jay and Cold and Meek might have overstayed their welcome there. And, you know, because we've got Sweet Speak and Wreck back together again. But old school, you should really watch out for your positioning right now. Yeah, but he still gets the kill. We don't actually have Cold and Meek uh, in position. At least I don't think he has been keeping track of it. He's been kind of dodging against Status Baked. And again, you know, Status Baked is landing a lot of that damage. And we're just going to go over the wall. <laughs> and Cold and Meek, well, is this actually going to work? He dodged it just a little bit. Status Baked thought perhaps he would back where he landed. But one step south saved his life right there. Oh, well, that was insane. If I think of a Status Baked and managed to stop Cold there from teleporting. And this is the thing about Lance, he is so incredibly tanky. He is able to stay alive for that long, unlike Mixie, who might not make it. Mixie he makes it. <laughs> a little bit of a clench right there, but Mixie will live through it. Rex finally coming up to land to support old school a bit, but three and one. Gold, not really that different, but there's certainly a lot of bloodshed here in game three. Shink. Definitely. I think it's a little bit more focused into the jungle right now. And I think in the previous games, we've seen a lot of action happening on the lanes. And in the jungle this time we're seeing these chases we're seeing these people overseeing the welcome i think maybe mistakes being made on both sides right now and they're certainly being capitalized on but you know we're not these even though we're seeing lots of fights it's actually amounting to too much well triple roam is, is something that again comes to mind here as kinetic once more you know this is a comp that we've seen quite a bit of and coming through to this one so far early game three and one again yeah, putting the catherine with that lance can really lead to some wonderful things yeah, definitely, and especially into that Kestro as well. You know, Catherine's an amazing counter into that Kestro. It just blocks all the damage coming out from those gl sorry, glitter shots, as you were calling it earlier, and those one-shot, one kill. Was it glitter shots? Yeah, glitter shot is, is a mispronunciation from a few championships ago. 
kind of comes out every now and then, but it was amazing at the time. He's going to call like glimmer it. shots, though, for now. I like it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and then Catherine, she's perfect, especially when she gets into the late game, the Stormguard reflection. There's so much damage! Yeah, and there it is. You know, that <laughs> stun train is ridiculously good. Mixie able to get some pot shots there and tough a wreck, but Status Baked is actually going to be throwing out that Drifting Dark. I don't know if he thought he could get aggressive there or not, but he kind of goes forward instead of backwards. He can't cut it out. Corrupted Genius will get him some energy back here, but uh, for now, it's just to be kinetic looking in flying form. Yeah, I gotta say, I feel like Kinetic are doing super well right now. And they're really, you know, Mixie's doing a really good job of bullying Old School back. He's always kind of like keeping his aggression in check, making sure he doesn't get too far forward. And he's doing a lot of damage when they're left into that 1v1 situation. Like right now, Old School, he's on fire, and that basic attack's going to be doing a lot of damage there on Old School. Minion Mines getting traded out here for uh, both sides. Old School in that lane. Is he actually going to go offensive? Yeah, he is, but <laughs> you can see Sweet Jay just saying, not today. Gonna just chase him on back into there, but old school wants to make something happen here on top of Mixie. You can feel it, you know, losing that 1v1 a little bit earlier on, not sitting well with him. Definitely not. And Mixie's actually out farming him right now 49 to 42. Well, 50 to 42, it's not that big a difference, but old school, he, he usually has that insane over 10 CS a minute, and he's just not getting the opportunity to do so. And when you're playing a hero like a Dazzy with a long range, you know, with a fire, you can really take advantage of that to push that old school back. You know, you normally be expecting the comp that gangsters are playing, they should have the early game advantage, but actually we're not seeing that. I feel like Hammer's Kinesic, they're playing a lot really well this this early game with that Catherine Lance combo. We're seeing the double, triple impales coming out from Call of the Meek, which is so important. And yeah, that, that's the big key to playing Lance. I mean, we've seen Lance in carry, we've seen him as Rome, haven't quite seen him in lane. It's really just kind of Kavalafar that pulls that card, but for now, yeah, you land the impales and magic can happen. You miss them and it, it's still just so very punishing. For now though, Githian, well, old school, nowhere to go. Don't even need an impale on that one. Roll into Githian and a very dead Kestrel is the result. Very dead Kestrel, 5-1. Old school's just getting the brunt of all the pain that Kinetic are dealing out right now. And see this biggest here? I don't see he's not going to bully them away just yet. I mean, Sweet Jay's just being pretty far forward right now. Drifting Dark again, and will Status Baked actually look for some damage here? He does get some pot shots onto Suijay, but he has the Storm Guard up. And as a result of, you know, still being in lane, they lose out that train once more. And we're starting to creep a little bit farther ahead every minute here. It's uh, Kinetic, not quite a thousand there, but about 500 or so. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that's really kind of hurting them right now is the, the kills. The Kinetic are just do, doing a lot better, just kind of picking up those kills. And I was just saying, you know, Sweet Jay there against Old School, that's like the perfect counter. And especially once we get into the late game, when we get those silences, you, you, need, to be able to, you need to be able to block them. Because otherwise Old School doesn't have his escape, he won't be able to use his Axe of Camel, Stasis Spade, you know, a Crystal Mage. He's effectively not able to do anything. It's so easy for Kinetic just to pick up the kills there if they can't block that silence. And the thing we see a lot of teams fact really struggle with is being able to block that blast tremor and it's a very very difficult ultimate to block but if you can it just you know really pays dividends now it's kind of curious if we we're going to see it over the wall there if that fight was going to happen but so far gangstars just kind of fighting on two fronts here they're not they're not uh, you know clumping up they're not collapsing which is good uh especially since cold amik will punish that very easily but they do got a good amount of vision here onto the side of did status big pick that up that oh big actually God. shot through the wall and actually got that uh, that trend. That's kind of funny. Uh, good stuff from him, though. Cold Amik does find some Githian on top of Wrecked into that wall, but here comes the Drifting Dark. One shot will go through. Mixie, he's basically done. The Scotland, though, will catch him. And we got that Oblivion there as well. He is going to sleep up. That might have been the misplay of the fight. Cold Amik, he's going for the root. It's enough. We get that kill. And all of a sudden, Gangstars, they were looking good early on. We get that found out. Wrecked not able to save it for status big, but... We just turn it right back around, and Kinetic, they don't lose Mixie, and now they're pushing up. They're looking for kills. They're looking for everything. Old School's not going anywhere. Wrecked. Yeah, stay, stick around, my friend. You're going to drop here as well, and they're going to pick up a turret to boost. They were tanking that tower for so long. It's absolutely insane. I want to say, you know, we uh, look, Call the Week landed every single impale there. And once he did, it was just so easy for Mixie to just kind of uh, and use his Agent of Wrath there and just really quickly in two or three hits just take down the, the target there. And I think they did that two or three times in that last fight. And we're, you know, we've got wrecked old school, they have their reflex block, status fate doesn't. And there's so many things on the side of 
hammer there that you need to be able to block. There's so much CC, and I think this we said this before when we saw the. I can't remember which team it was that played this exact same comp, but there is so much CC on this. It feels like, despite the fact you know, standard pick 46 to the 53 of Cole, but between uh, the turret going down, the gold mine, the four kills going over to Cole, he feels rather behind. He goes with the broken man too, but he does now have the reflex. Uh, but we do got the reflex now. We have the crucible on top of Rex, so we should have no more excuses for this crowd control stuff going on. That being said, I mean, Cole, he's still looking for it again. He's gonna find status baked, and if he tries to run, there's an impale waiting for him. It doesn't even matter. We don't need it. The impale goes out to the back line. It's now a two and no, and Rex, I don't think you're gonna get out of this one, buddy. Another stun, and Cole with the root once more. That's a <laughs> clean ace. Worth it for the fans to just keep Cole to make alive, and that, that, the, the... <laughs> They delve so deep there between two turrets to try and pick up the ace, and it worked so well. And I've got to say, that comes down to the Kirkenshaw. Stays as bait at the start. I think the positioning was just really, really bad. Just way at the mm -hmm. very front. And just left them very vulnerable. They got, he got the chain stuns, and then what we saw happening was... Obviously a fight. 2v3. <laughs> 2v3. <laughs> well, the Drifting Dark was a good idea, but Old School does not get empowered. Now his status baked, unfortunately, will drop to make sure with those empowered auto attacks by the end of it all. I don't think we're gonna go for wrecked, but okay, a verse, nope, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's mayhem, kinetic. So far ahead, we're gonna get the stun. He's looking for the kill on top of Cole, but he's not taking out the turret. Oh, actually, he might be now, but he is gonna <laughs> keep wrecked at bay unless we got the one shot to come through. And we do, finally, the second kill of the game for Gangstars. Uh, I think next year probably should just think about maybe going home at this point. He's a little bit too low on it. He does have that heal there, but maybe it's just a little bit safer just to go home or just pick up those healing minions instead, the tree ants. But uh, you know, that 2v3 there where we just saw old school and status like, running into the arms of Kinetic, thinking they could take them and it just went also very wrong for them, I think in the simplest term as, it, as I can put I mean, that's it. That's a very kind way to say it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it went oh, go, oh, so, oh so very wrong. <laughs> it absolutely demolished. It was absolutely insane. And, you know, they've got a lot of power behind those two heroes, but when you don't have the defense, when you've got the CC coming out, there's absolutely no forgiveness for them. And I would have expected better from Old School and Status Fate than to go running willy nilly into well, the middle of a three man team. I know the shots fired here from across the pond, but. <laughs> it's okay. It's a few thousand miles. I just. No, no big deal. I'll be there by supper. But uh, Cole Meek now has that double Sora blade. No breaking point here. Who's he going to go for? He's looking for old school. He's already used out those boots. He's looking for the impale. Blocked out. Still did the damage. At the same time, wrecked. He's running for his life. There was no Samuel for this one, but we're turning things around. Cole Meek, are we going to get that oblivion? He does, but he's also getting healed up through it. Uh, we, I think that was the fountain it was. Yeah, Sweet J keeping him going. Cole. I mean, you gotta be on the same page if you're gonna make this work. Splitting into two targets, they chased both and got none. Yeah, but that was not great. And this is what I mean, the split folks, when you've got this chain CC, you have to be picking one target. You, you know, we, we want to see the sun come from Suijay, we want to see the chain impale then, and they need to pick their targets. And I think this is something that we're seeing, lack of miscommunication just for that team fight. Hopefully we won't be seeing it in the next fight as gangs are serious, are kind of running in towards that jungle. This, is, this could go very, very badly if they don't time this right. He, right. Does, he does have the gauntlet. Yeah, but there's the drifting dark gauntlet goes down. We already have that blast tremor and old school is already burning down so much. Cole trying to get into that back line, looking to get those cleaves done, but <laughs> not weathering the storm. We got 10 seconds on Fountain. Sweej has no health here for the team. He's going to get in front of Mixi for the body blocks. Cole, you do not make a turn here, my friend. Go on the way you're going. We have that Fountain up now. We got the reflex here on top of Mixi, so if they want to fight, I mean, they can make a go of it, but it does look like they are just going to collapse back to the turrets. It's actually Cole going home all the way. Signs of life they're coming out from Gangstars. That looked, that looked a very promising engage, because, you know, we knew that Sweejay had used the fountain, and they knew that he didn't, wouldn't have it available for the next 40 seconds. That was a really good fight. And they didn't chase up, which was a shame, but, you know, it's probably a good idea in the end, because, they, you know, by going that far in, by chasing that far, it have left him in a very bad position. And it's like status fakers right now, actually, where he is. <laughs> Drifting Dark <laughs> comes out of nowhere. I think there might be a Sammy on the other side of this one, guys. Oblivion goes out. Doesn't matter. Mixi wasn't in it, and he can shoot you over the wall there. So that is another death for our Samuel. Zero and four. The typically aggressive status baked and uh, has kind of been shut. Game. 
Yeah, very much so. And you we pointed out the different, you know, at the time, status bay compared to Calvin Mate, the CS, there wasn't much difference. But the gold that they're getting from those turrets, from the gold mine, from those kills, it's really beginning to, you know, add up. They're 6k ahead now. And just feel like this, this Samuel Kestrel combination just isn't working out great for, for gangsters right now. Well, the only kind of big uh, hard CC that they got is wrecked on that gauntlet. Other than that, not really much else in the bank to nail down their opponents. On the flip side, though, I mean, you got stun from Suijay, you got stun from uh, get in wall into a wall. Uh, you know, you also have those impales from Cole. Make sure he has a verse if he really needs it uh, that can you know stun up people there if they're on fire. So. There's a lot of difference when it comes to the balancing of uh, crowd control here. And so far, the lack of it from Gangstars has kind of bit them in the butt. Yeah, I mean, that is definitely true. But Stasis, he's been doing actually a really good job of using the Oblivion. And I feel like it is kind of catching them off guard, catching Kinesic off guard. I don't think I've seen them block it that many times. But I just don't think he's getting the right targets. I mean, yeah. who, do you, who do you want to you know send to sleep? Do you want to send Call the Meek or do you want to send Mixi? And I feel like Call the Meek are... Yeah. To be <laughs> like you sleep them, you go to the other target. So far, we put people to sleep, and then we've either immediately hit them, or they put them to sleep, and they didn't get Mixi in it, right? Yeah. So you, whoever you put to sleep, you know, if it's going to be cold, jumping in, put them to sleep, go right by them, do the two v three, right? Uh, it's just not happening here. And well, this could be do or die time for Gangstars. If they lose out this fight, they're going to lose out a crack. And Cole's going into the back. We do got the gauntlet going up. Rex, though, is starting to really look a little bit low. Mixi not opting to leave. He's going to throw down that burst. And the first damage is good. There goes one and two. But they do trade it out. And it does not matter. Drifting Dark or no. It's a three for one. And Kinetic, with these eighth buff minions, I think they can get the best of both worlds here. Yep, they're going to get that tower, and they're going to get the Kraken. And what went wrong in that play? I mean, first off, we're talking about the Oblivion right before that fight broke out. And the person that stays this big magic catch was Sweet Jay, who's arguably probably isn't the person you want to be sending to sleep out of that, that trio. Probably I mean, probably not exactly right. And although they were able to pick up the kill there, you know, that was really nice picking up the kill there in the Mixi. But, you know, call the Mickey, he's got those two sorrow blades. He's got an absolutely insane amount of damage if he lands those impales, which he has been. And unfortunately, that fight was just wasn't a great position for Gangstars. They were in a narrow channel. They were kind of standing a little bit too clumped up, and that's why he was able to land those impales onto more than one target. Did we get the turret? The turret is definitely mm -hmm. dead. We did get the crack in here as well, so that's the best of the both right there. We got infusions on everyone 16 minutes in. It's looking good as uh, Koldemik, as I said, double Soros, has that armor and that Aegis. Aegis there for Mixi as well. He has his full three. And he's been hitting like a truck on top of things. Might have died that last fight, but he took the whole team with him uh, by the time that verse did land. And look at Cole Demik. He's looking for that positioning, saying, okay, I'm not going to go into that active camo, but we do have this gauntlet, and Mixi is a big target. They put him to sleep that time. This was a better execution, and they still couldn't bring down Mixi. Now old school, he's a target. Cole Demik is actually still not looking so great. Status Bake able to bring him down. Old school's in a 1v1 with Suede there into the back, and Mixi is going to drop. So I got to say... Gangster is finally bringing that comp to light, but we got a Kraken in their base. No, well, we definitely have a Kraken there, and that Kraken's done good work on that second to last turret. And do they have enough damage to try and take it down? I actually, arguably, yes. <laughs> They've done good work on like the past five seconds. That I, that, that turret crack is not actually going to be doing too much damage onto that last turret. So, well played, Gangstars. Well played. So I would argue that the Oblivion was much better that time. They found it yeah. on top of Cole, they switched targets, went on top of Mixi, they had the gauntlet down there as well, so uh, unless they wanted to use those Aegis, they had some pretty guaranteed targets. In fact, I don't even think Cole gets to use his Aegis there, Mixi neither, but, uh, or maybe it's just already back up, it's been a while. Uh, either way, I mean, gangsters, that's what they gotta do more often. They gotta find that on top of Cole or Mixi and swap onto the other, and well, the, uh, the theory was there, the execution was a little lacking. That's because they're behind so much in gold. Yeah, it's I, the execution was definitely lacking. And what I mean to say this is that old school, you know, you've got this Kestrel, you've got this Samuel, and what these two heroes are really good at is poking. And what you should be seeing them is just poking away, kind of retreating, kind of going forward again, poking and then moving back. But we're not seeing that. And part of that is because I feel they're kind of playing very kind of like a dive comp kind of mentality right now which is what Kinetic have. They're playing that very well, but we're just not seeing it coming out from Gangstars. Yes. A lot of it has been, you know, we have a Drifting Dark, and then the fight kind of goes away from it. Status Bakes has not really been 
able to use those uh, very well because you know that it, that empowered verdict and malice is, is nothing to joke about especially here into later game he has only two items though he's gone a little bit more defensive than offensive that's sort of just because of the pacing of the game he's one in five now but you know two three items on a samuel by late game with infusions i mean it's no joke it's no joke says the jester right yeah if the jester's not making a joke you know it's a serious matter right there but that's a great silence it allowed cole to get into the back status big is a huge target right now great drifting dark those keeping status a little bit more at the back of the gauntlets enough they do pick up that kill the oblivion it went through very nicely old school however he gets now returned where is the damage wrecked he's not gonna have it so it's all up to status baked here and he can he get through this one he'll bring sweet jay down but it will be the double double Make sure you're the only one to live as well as Rex. Yeah, one for one. Well, two for two trade off there in that fight. And I've got to say, they managed to stun Call the Meek onto the Gauntlet Wall. And it was just so easy to focus him down afterwards. And that was that was, went really well, you know. And I've got to say, I was I really had high status was kiting away there, using his Drift and Dark, kind of using that to regain his health, using it to regain his energy, because I feel like he was he was really running low at some points. Make sure doing the Kraken. He's, he's, he's giving it his best go. Uh, I don't know if Wrecked is okay or not. He's just kind of hanging out in base. Oh, yeah, there we go. He picks up that infusion, no problem. Cole actually refreshes his there as well. Mixie, though, is, I think, far enough ahead. Remember, he's three items, has that Aegis. The cell feels might have been toned down a little bit this patch, but there's no vision here. There is absolutely snipe, no snipe. telltale here. I want to see a snipe from Castro. Not happening. No, no that flare no, coming snipe. down way too late. Cole was in position anyways to block it. This is bad luck going for uh, Gangster. They had no idea that was happening. I mean, last time Kinetic went, got the Kraken, uh, what we saw was Gangster. So he just took down the rest of Kinetic and then focused on the Kraken. I think we should want, we really do want to see the same thing here because they're being very aggressively moving forward into lane. And that's not to say the Kraken then, that's to try and take down Kinetic. But the last team fights or so have not been going well. And Oldschool, you're way too far forward. Yeah, status baked though with that drifting dart coming forward. He has used out those boots to try to get as much damage as he can, and he does land a good bit of it there on top of Cole. It is the the A, uh, yeah, it is the A and the C here for status baked actually maxed out. So the drifting dark again. Just look at the range. Look at the damage. If you try to chase into him. You're going to be face smacking right into those val Malice and Verdicts, but this is where Kinetic got to get aggressive. They got one turret between them and a win. Look at Cole. He's looking into position, into the back. He's taking so much damage. Old School is just landing shot after shot into this Cole to make, and there he goes. He is done, but I think the damage is there. Sweet Jay, it's good. The turret goes down, and they just focus their efforts, and they get the win. Wow, that Kraken. So, you know, we I, they, we saw Kraken start going for Kinetic like the way it wanted to, but they realized that Kinetic were dragging them away from the Kraken and away from the turret, so they're like, okay, we need to take down the Kraken. And it was so, so very close there at the end, but we saw Kinetic going for the Bane Crystal, and that probably was the best idea for them there. And unfortunately, I would, I would say that, that was a very dominant game by Kinetic. I just feel like Gangstars didn't utilize the comp that they had as well as they could. I want to see a little bit more poke coming out from them, especially in the early game. And I think it would be nice i seen Wrecked babysit Old School a little bit more in lane because I feel like Old School is really struggling against Mixie there. Uh, they've done so and have him rotate down the joint status bait for the front camps. Maybe that would have gone a little bit better and kind of negated the dominance that we're seeing, the lane dominance coming out from Kinetic. Kinetic made it uh, good. I mean, the first game didn't really look like they were up to the task, but games two and three bringing us all the way through. Cole the Meek and Mixie, we'll see more of them tomorrow.